How'd that go? Good. Yeah. Yeah.
Hey, Susie. Hey, George. How's it going? Good. We're in recording mode because I don't know how to not be. <laughs> okay. Well, then we'll have to watch what we say. Yeah. And um, I probably should do whatever you need to do to share screen with you. Right? Yeah. Do you know what that is? I'm going to look at this little green button. It says share screen. What do you do? One participant can share at a time. Multiple participants. Probably try that. Um, and you can't find the spot where you can turn the recording off. Uh, no, no, I know how to stop the video and to mute myself, but um, yeah, I, I hadn't done this for a calendar year. So learning to launch the meeting, I, I just did. And then it's like, oh, you're recording now. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So be it. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think that would have mattered. Um, the only thing is, it's two minutes up. There may be other participants, but if you want, I can take the screen right now. Um, actually, there's a place for pausing the recording. Um, I, I, I will just go ahead with it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So yeah, you can. Um, I don't. I'll watch for participants over here. I think, and and you go ahead and um, share the screen. So you saw what. You saw what I had sent you, I assume. Yep. 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 Oh. Which is this. Yep. With all and the uh, pages, yep, of the other one. Um so this this ties to the budget that Becky had shown all of us, right. but there's two additional expenses. I, I know I mentioned it in my email. Yep. Um Yep. that need to be presented to the finance committee but the personnel board approved them yeah i see so, that Good. so you guys had a quorum we did yeah me april and melissa good so anyways you know this is this this first part i just jump right into it i guess mm -hmm. you, well before i do have you seen what other towns are doing do you read the gazette yeah, and so that's a very good reference point. And I, I, you know, I looking at the format of our report, there's not a particular place where you can do that, but I saw like South Hadley, 4.6% increase. Um, I saw, to, did you see today's article on Comerford working on the Quabbin uh, pilot money? And I read that email, she had forwarded that email and I'd read that last week. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was thinking we should put that at the bottom as opportunity. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, it, yeah, because we don't know when that'll come into effect. I'm just going to type it in real quick and dirty here, but yep. we can talk about it later. But I'm just going to yep. put in Quabbin. Yeah, Quabbin Pilot. Yep. See. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah, and what El but what was interesting was uh, Leverett and what they're doing. Okay. I've forgot what Leverett's doing. Yeah, that was in yesterday's paper. You should go back and look in yesterday's paper. They're increasing. I've got it right here, Susie, because you know what I decided I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a running tally yeah. of the different towns. Right. Good. Because uh, this yeah. is relevant and we might want to talk about it, but here's Leverett. Here, let me make this yeah. bigger. Yeah, I saw that their budget was 7.17. <clears throat> See, and some of it's going to be, uh, well, so how did they go over the um, guardrails? Uh, well, they didn't go over the guardrail. This is the guardrail for the region. Is fifty nine thousand? Oh, right. Yep, yep. Yeah, I see. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then there's the elementary, and they must be digging into excess levy capacity because there's no way they can go. This is two and a half. This is way more than two and a half. I'm sure uh -huh. of their levy. Yeah. So they're going into levy capacity. Their raises are four point five, and their chief is going to full time. I thought was really interesting. I saw that. I saw him do that. Build up that. So, I mean, so far compared to the other towns, what we're doing is yeah. A, kind of in line, but definitely lower. Right, right. Yep. And so Hatfield was, uh, so they were, um, so did you see South Hadley's 4.6? I didn't see South Hadley. I kind of didn't take, pay too much attention to them because they're so different than so us. Different. Right. Even, Hat, even Hatfield is kind of on the borderline. Yep. They're, they're double our size, but there's, you know, they have a lot of commercial that we don't have. Right, right. But I thought it was relevant because their two and a half override is a big number relative to their budget. It's almost, it's like 8% of their budget. I mean, it's wow. crazy. Yeah. yeah, yep, yeah. So yeah. anyways, that. So in part of that, 
so I'm thinking about the narrative part, is that Shutesbury has been working to keep up with things as much as it can. And so on the positives, we've made progress on the library, the school floors, and the school roof. Those are things that are like fundamental. Um, I guess we're also keeping up with um, equipment at the, uh, for the DPW and the vehicles for the police. We're keeping up. And so, um, you know, people want it to not keep going, but it has to keep going. That's what keeping up is. You always have somebody to admit. There we go. Here comes AJ. Okay, cool. Great. And uh, I thought maybe Jim Walton might, but we can we can get started. Um, he expressed an interest. Yeah, yeah, and he's been helpful in the past. Hey guys, and, hey. we're on recording. So, <laughs> um, uh, I had a quick question for you guys. I I just want to make sure I uh, I know I was just looking at the draft. Warrant articles. Have you guys received those? I, I I did. I only looked at two of them so far. I, I was going to do it today. Okay, got it. Did you have a question on them? Did you see something that didn't look right? Well, I mean, there's a bunch of things that on the capital side that we haven't discussed in any detail. We haven't like. Um, I don't know if you want to. I don't know if it's worth going through. I guess there's section four of the report where we list the uh, the warrant articles, but I, I guess just wanted to flag that there are a bunch of items that I think we have. Yeah, yeah I think, okay. I think that's, I think that's probably going to have to wait till Tuesday night and we can all as a committee talk about it and Becky okay. can show those to us. That's what I'm thinking. I, I don't know that the three of us now can really do anything with that. It'll just distract from the report if you, you yeah. know, right. if you don't, if you agree, I hope you. Yeah. I do. Um, uh, the, the only other thing is, is that I, she's got a very different number for the backhoe. It was like 200. And, anyway, I think that was maybe a I think I, I think what Becky does is she takes old Warren articles to make new Warren articles. Okay. okay. And sometimes doesn't quite. Pump. I noticed on the article, I you know, the article one, I noticed she had all the last year's dates on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, no which which makes sense. You gotta you gotta start from <laughs> from from something. Right, but we Pick definitely line. need to flag those things. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, then. Yeah, I think just um, I think just sort of be aware that there's going to be some new discussion about how to fund a bunch of capital items that we hadn't like put on your capex you know, spreadsheet earlier. And so we're yeah. going to sort through that. Okay. So Su Susie and I were talking about narrative. And what, yeah. one of the things we were just talking about before you joined was what Leverett's doing. You mm -hmm. can see my screen, right? I can, yeah. Yeah, so you can see Leverett's budget increase is like double hours mm -hmm. as scale-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and their budget is actually going to be larger than ours next year. I, they've been they've been behind us for years, and they finally caught us last year in the same range. Now they're passing us, and you can see what their big items are. You know the real reasons they're doing that. Yeah, these are the big items. So that's interesting. And yeah. then Sunderland, I haven't started writing about, but Sunderland was in the paper today, so I'm going to add some points about Sunderland. It's just going to kind of keep this for my mental thought on Tom Floor if we start talking about other towns. But yeah. Hatfield's really interesting because. They're looking for a two and a half override, and I got to write it in. I read it this morning in the paper um, for their schools, so I got to update this one too. But they're looking for a lot for their school. It's like seven hundred thousand dollars, over seven hundred thousand, maybe eight hundred. And um, if the override doesn't go through, they're going to have to cut their school budget. So they're looking at a real scary situation there. Wow. Do we have any? Just out of curiosity, since you're showing this, do we have any information from Pelham or? Amherst and what they no. budgets look like. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I don't know about Amherst. Yeah, I haven't seen anything in the paper about Amherst budget yet. All right, yeah. it's coming. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a good point. That would be useful to have that regional context. I, I try to read the paper every morning, and yeah. this time of year, Art AJ, 
you're you're going to see if you read the Gazette, you're going to start seeing before every town meeting, they're going to, there's going to be an article about all those towns. So I expect that I'm going to have six or seven towns on this little right. note thing. Yeah. With, by the time we go, because we're so late this year. Yeah. All right. And, and I think that um, part of this meeting, drafting the report, is thinking about how to help people have a context. And I think our report tries to do that. But we might have a sheet that just has. Um, area town factoids, because it, it's not that Shutesbury sees the world so differently. It, it, so we're trying to keep up. And I, I feel to our credit, we're keeping up at a more even keel. Um, and after a year of spending out our FinCom reserves, it feels a little overwhelming. Um, are we really keeping up? Are there some issues we need to highlight um, as a result of that? spending out because we're involved in things that are, um, we didn't anticipate the PIP, you know, the, that kind of stuff. It's taking up time and money and for both and has a projection of like legal expenses and professionalizing services that I don't think we, I looked at our list, we didn't mention, <laughs> we didn't mention sort of getting into the weeds about stuff like that, but that's the life we're living right now. Yeah, I, I think I think that that just in terms of the themes, I mean, you know, I think I think in the past we've we've you know we've faced some criticism from some some you know voices about kind of having these overly bloated uh, reserve accounts, or at least that, that's the perspective of some people. And I think this is uh, this is a year. Where um, the where I think we can really demonstrate that it was prudent planning that mm -hmm. has sort of put us in a position where, despite I mean, item after item of unanticipated, unexpected um, kind of expense that has hit us throughout the year from so many sort of different places, and I think we we're in a position to handle that and not have it become lead to a, a crisis because of the careful planning that we've done and yeah taking last care of those results. So last year people wanted to empty the free cash account out. Come January, we need 155,000. It's right. like what would we have done? Right. So yeah. so words like prudent, prepared and we're in new times. Like the whole PFAS thing is an exact example of why you have to have the ability to react mm -hmm. and and the amount of work it's taking for them to just recover or or get the loan it's not even a recovery it takes up people's time um so preparing for and money it's five thousand dollars for tag and bond to prepare the application for the 136 thousand dollar loan of which some will be forgiven and some will not but it'll be a zero interest loan and so it's it's these whole it, it has to be seen as a whole um, that when you have a new situation it takes people's time and it takes the volunteers time and the town is well uh, works hard at creating um, resources to meet it so that's true for PFAS, that's true for the DOD and solving um, Lotto 32's pollution. There's a lot going on. And um, I don't, I just want people to stop sort of um, holding the narrow view and understand that this is what we're preparing for, that we're being prudent and we're um, prepared, but there are things we can't anticipate. Right. Yeah. It's like any household. Everybody has a savings account for an ex in anticipated expenses. And, you know, we really need people to understand that. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, well, I lost it. But um, the, the other thing I wanted to say was in the context of the other towns, the other thing I would add to that narrative is we want to demonstrate what's going on in other towns because we want to show that they're impacted by the same forces that impact us. Right. But we're not the only town grappling with these things, and we're not the only town who's having a big increase this year. It turns out all towns are having very large elementary school increases in their budgets, right. and the forces are the same for all of us. 
we have not had to use the excess levy capacity. It builds every year because we don't tax in the full two and a half year to year to year. This is the first year, and you're going to see it on this report. This is the first year we are going to be using some of that excess levy capacity. We are raising the tax levy by more than two and a half percent this year. $26,000. It's not huge, but we are. And people need to see Leverett's doing it way bigger than we are. Hatfield looks like they're going to do it way bigger than we are. So, you know, I think that's an important part of that con conversation. And yeah. we need to give that credit to the school committee and to the department. Um, it's not just what we see. We see what these people are doing. So um, there was an effort, a big effort on the town, on the school committee's part to hold the reins as best as possible. And um, it's electricity and it's fuel and it's things that all of us experience that they too are experiencing. Somehow, I also was thinking about trying to call things services instead of expenses or instead of budget. What we're paying for are services. And somehow I want that word in there more so that people don't disconnect what we're getting for our tax dollars. I would add to that too, uh, the labor shortage and the, and the problem with labor is because mm -hmm. that's a big driver of inflation. It's mm -hmm. a definitely you know, inflating our school budget. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, again, an example of an external force that we all have to grapple with. And it is affecting all towns. And, it, and there's no way we can hide from that. Yeah. So the word external force, the words prepared and prudent, and that we're living in changing times. I think people want to act like the um, COVID thing is over because you don't go into public spaces and worry about getting sick. But there's still some impact in that, and I, you know, people don't want to hear that anymore. <laughs> They're already done with that. People, but, people are, yeah. But it, we're losing a thousand people a week. Yeah, and that's the number I've been seeing. Right. It's not over. And that affects the labor market, not just the deaths, just the way people view the world of what they can handle anymore. So yeah. I think external forces is a really important word, and they're shared. All right. Um, George, I didn't see the um, the building repairs 20K on the sheet. Is it? It's yeah. Not well, do you want to go through this in order? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just just on that one, Susie. I also didn't see it in the list of warrants. Unless I missed it. Oh but, yeah. Well, that's yeah, yeah. That's something worth telling Becky about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did have it here. I think this is what it was. Here, but it's not on the spreadsheet. Is that right? It's not near line 177. Let me find the spreadsheet. This one? Oh, no, but I mean in the budget line. Sorry, it, I see where you're looking. Um, it's it, it's not in our expenses re uh, report. Or respect. It's not on the budget? It's not on the budget lines. So when we get back to line 177. You mean it's not here? That's right. See, it I don't. But it's a capital item. It wouldn't yeah, be it's a capital. Oh, Jesus. But see, this is, this is why I still see like 174 says transfer to capital projects below. Right. Uh, no, what is it? Three. Yeah, 175 says that. And isn't the 20,000 supposed to be in there? We did it for a while. We used to fund it with yeah, the well, that's library building. We used to put money in the town fund, but we stopped doing it a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. And now we're just doing it with cash where it used to be we had it built in the budget so the tax levy could cover it. Oh. But now we're just transferring free cash to the account. To well, the fund. it's funny because I thought what line 175 meant it, that it's fund 30, right? Is that what F30 means? Yes. Yeah. I thought somehow, oh, I still don't get it. But again, this. we have a fund 30 and we try to fund it. In the past, we were putting it in the operating budget so that the tax rate could cover it. Okay. This year, 
we're not using the tax rate. We're using free cash. Okay. All right. Yeah, and we kind of took it out of the budget. I mean, <laughs> you know, you could do it both ways, really, because that's what we're doing with the um, uh, oh, with okay. the legal bill. You know, we're increasing it by fifteen thousand, and we're using free cash for that. Well, we're increasing it by twenty five, but we're using fifteen of free okay. cash. Okay. But this is we're treating this more like the way we treat buying equipment. Yeah, I guess um, no, and I I work at trying to understand this, and I've been trying to understand it for a few years. I don't, I don't, I wonder if we can do some kind of process that's more consistent. Like what shows up on the budget lines and how they're identified as funded from some- Well, the, the, concept, the concept is we want to put things in the operating budget that we want to fund from the tax rate year over year over year. Right. Um, and then we have capital items, right? Where we're using stabilization, free cash, or sometimes we have to borrow. And so we want to keep those out of the operating budget. So the question is, which side of that coin do these are these on? And to me, it's a capital item. Now, if building maintenance, building repair, building upgrades is an annual thing year over year, I think it should be in the operating budget. You know, if it's just a fund and we don't have specific items, why not fund it through the operating budget at ten thousand a year? You know, like we do unemployment, like we do revals. Just keep filling up the fund take money from it as you need it and let's have a rate that just keeps it viable. Yeah, I, I guess um, some of what Bob is trying to wrestle with is reflected in not wanting it to be a, a carte blanche, even for a, an amount that's not um, effectively <laughs> dealing with all of it. Um, but I just was thinking what we were doing is taking it out of free cash but I thought that that line, 177, reflected stuff funded out of free cash. And, and since nothing was there, I thought, OK, I don't I still don't get it. Yeah, it looks like we abandoned the concept, you know. So on the on the line above it, when we when we used to do a, a, an annual 25K. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, it's curious to me that because because that was always a capital item right that we typically funded through well yeah the library itself is a capital item what we wanted to do is build up the fund to oh, take right. the pressure off the taxes in the future so we decided that we would fund twenty five thousand a year out of taxes. So, so in some years it was it looks like through fy 22 or no fy 21 it was it was funded through the tax levy, but then yeah. FY22, you were right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well, I don't know why the actual isn't 25. That's a good question. The actual should be 25. Yeah. Cause for FY23 was, I thought the first year we decided not to do it because right, FY23. Because we got the grant. Yes, exactly. And we knew we were going, we had a warrant article to fund the whole project. Right. Yeah. I'm going to ask Becky about um, actual 20. Uh, FY22 library building fund. Library. That's interesting that if we put it in the budget, it, it had to be spent. So I think that's a mistake. I'll have to ask it. But right. did, did we do it out of free cash one year? We may have. Here I can check actually. Fiscal yeah. to what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably. Yep, we did. That's exactly what it is. There was three items. I remember that year. There was three items, and one oh, of them was right. that. Yeah, so that, that explains it, yeah. That explains it. It does, but if you're putting it here in revenue, I think it should be here in expense. <laughs> right. I'll talk to Becky about it. I'll send her a note. Well, I, I and I think what this bears on is trying to make it very clear not only to us and members who are who wrestle with this but also to the town so i don't i don't know how it's almost like that whole section should be taken off but i don't know well the thing is we want to present this the way we presented in previous years one of the things conversations i had with becky when i looked this over was i was like these numbers need to be the same as what we had on last year's report Mm -hmm. And some of them weren't. And that's how we found a few things missing. We found a couple of mistakes and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I told her, you know, this is in the public record. This is filed on our website after town meeting, you know, Grace posts it. I said, yeah. we don't want these years to look different. 
right in this year so we went back and we fixed them all i don't i think this just got missed last year and now we just discovered it so i don't know we might want to leave it but i'll talk to becky about that okay. all right okay but yeah the concept yeah but that's the concept for me is how much do we want to pay out of the tax levy and how much is really capital item whatever yeah. we got it. so what about um did the debt service I didn't see the debt service reflecting um, the backhoe. And okay. I... Yes. So let me explain. So debt service is always one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, right? Because we increased this by fifty-eight five for these two items, mm -hmm. right? Uh, sure. But we took fifty-eight five out of the transfer to the capital stabilization. So this number plus that number look down here is 135. So we're 135,000 for debt service every year. If you define debt service as the debt service plus the transfer to the capital stabilization. Right. So um, that's why I didn't put a note in there about that. And we so, cover it when we get to the lower section and we're talking about the capital items. So the word, so the word backhoe doesn't show up in this list, right? It does here. Oh, well, yeah, maybe she, uh, yeah, she needs to uh, fix that description here. I'll, I'll send it yeah. to So I wondered if that was the first payment on last year's dump truck. Oh, right. Oh, no, you're 100% right. I'm sorry. That, yes. So that should because be. Because there's that. always a year lag. Well, where is the, oh, so that, is that why the backhoe doesn't show up there? Right, because the first payment won't be until fiscal 25. Okay. First payment, where is it going? So somewhat, if anybody is in the audience is following along, um, when we get to section four, yeah. the backhoe, um, do we want to say first payment FY25? Sure. Um, well, mm -hmm. That well, was going to be funded with capital stabilization. There is yeah, no that's the thing. We were we weren't at least initially. Okay. See right there, capital stabilization. All right. All this right. If that's change, what we. This may change after our next meeting because we've right. got a lot of new items. So numbers. Okay. Numbers are going to look very different. All right. Yeah, well, that schedule is going to be really handy. Yeah. Yeah. It is handy. Yeah. No, it's it's been a it's been a real helpful tool. Yeah. Um, so do you want to start at the top and just work our way down? Sure. Yeah. So the one thing I'm going to jump to the budget real quick. Uh, I wanted to, so because you you both may not be aware, but the, I know you're probably heard about it. The personnel board met with the fire chief and we met with Grace, the town uh, clerk. And Grace came last minute, unfortunately, but she did come to us and ask for um, an assistant town clerk to be hired in the next fiscal year in anticipation of the elections. She said, when we're in an election cycle, we've got the primaries and the presidential election. And now with the new mandates from the state in regards to early voting, she said that she's really going to need help. And honestly, cross training, I think, is really important. Um, she said there's been many times when I was sick, I was out, and there's nobody to do these things. And people in town are expecting to come in at office hours and take care of their personal business. So she, um, the personnel board listened to everything she had to say, and we basically approved the addition of the position. So it was like $9,600. Becky put in 10000 for the budget. So this is something that we haven't talked about as a finance committee yet. Right. I know you know this. And then the other one was the fire chief, who we had been in conversation with for a while, and we finally wrapped up that conversation in our last meeting. He's having a devil of a time keeping people. And he's he asked for minimum number of hours. He asked that when somebody shows up for a call, that we pay them for four hours, regardless, for a minimum of four hours. I asked him, um, if he'd be okay with three hours and we lowered it to three hours because the state of Massachusetts, if you schedule somebody to work and you send them home early, you have to pay them for a minimum of three hours. So I said, that seems to be the standard line and he was okay with it. Um, 
he's working on an estimate for us, but Becky increased their, their increase was originally gonna be $436 and she added 10,000 there. We're waiting on an estimate from him, but those things were added to the budget that we looked at last week. And that's really the only difference in these numbers here from what we had all seen as a committee. And it raised our total expenses to 6.9. Do you know if, um, so one of the contexts we're going to present is, this is how other towns around us are under the same pressure. Do you know if anybody else does minimum call hours? I don't, that's a good question, I don't. So I just wanna have sort of the, the um, pre presentation. And, and then early voting, has been um, and mail-in voting adds to the town clerk's um, load, and I believe right now there's no it's an unfunded mandate. Yep. So that's something everybody is also wrestling with. I also and think that we also should say that there's no benefits attached to a 10-hour position. Right. Good point. Um, there was a thought. Oh, I'm going to check the wage and tax, um, the wage and salary schedule for Franklin County and see if I can find out, um, see any information about firefighters and minimum wage. Mm -hmm. There might be information in there. If I get some time, I'll take a look at that. Mm -hmm. It's a quick look. It doesn't take me long. Firefighters right. minimum pay. Okay, I'll look into that. And then you just said. Um, we should point out that there's unfunded mandates. Is that what it was? Well, yeah. we're going to get we'll get to there. The other thing I was going to say is one of the other pressures that she's been feeling in recent years is a lot of um, what's it called? Um, Freedom for Information Act. I forget the acronym. A request. Public, public, public records, right? Yeah, public record requests. You know, and she's been public. I mean, she's been in the Globe talking about that. So, yeah. and just, um, like, meet, for like meeting recordings and that kind of thing, or is it? Documents, minutes, a lot of minutes from meetings going back well, 10 also, years. And also um, voter records, because those, you know, those other groups, national groups are checking all that kind of stuff. Um, and the other thing is, and I've been thinking about it because I was town clerk, in New Salem when I was a town clerk, um, that person had one night of public hours. That's it. Everything else and they they worked minimal hours um it could so the town needs to understand if you want to be able to you know access the services that people provide that costs money should the town clerk reduce her public hours by half and and then she has more time to do the work that isn't about um serving the public it's serving the office um, th that's the trade. Um, I know that the town clerk and the administrative um, assistants there also do like trash bag distribution. Do you want to have a restricted times so that you can get your trash bags? Um, because all of that is services. And that's, that's part of why I'm thinking that that word is really important. These are services. These are services that the town should be requiring and we even if I personally don't go in there and need to talk to the town clerk, there are many people in our town that do, and we need to make sure it's accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. And that's our perspective. That's my perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want people to think of it in the context of, well, what the hell do we need a town clerk for? They, they need to understand that a lot of people in our town do need a town clerk. Yeah, but when she asks for 10 more hours a week, it's, it's because these services are provided. Some of them are are sort of open to debate. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she closes her office to the public x number of hours. Now we don't really want to have a long debate about this on town meeting floor, but it's it's trying to get people to understand what it is that um, the budgets are doing. They're providing these services. Yep. So there's the nine million, the six million nine eleven that we talked about. This is the number right here on the chart. Mm -hmm. And so I, this part, I just did what I normally do. The increase mm -hmm. year to year is 3.5%. This is why the context of the other towns is important. And then 
uh, break down all the revenue sources. And these all tie to Becky's revenue page, including the $15,000 for temporary legal costs. I don't know if we want to call it legal costs or just temporary costs. But I added this line is new because this year we're actually using free cash to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see uh, the residential and the commercial. I kind of I took the percentages as they were in the current fiscal year and I just applied them to the total tax levy. Mm -hmm. There's a little rounding there by a thousand dollars, but you know, not a big deal really. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the two footnotes, and over here for FY24. So the tax levy is 5622, which I just wanted, while well, you're here, um, do, so there's the tax levy right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, here. Before before the um, overlay, 4622, and then there, Becky is going to use the assessed value of the town as it is currently. I asked her to consider increasing it by the value of the properties that produce new revenue, new growth, because those are all going to be added to the value. She wasn't comfortable with that. Mostly she wasn't comfortable with that because she wants to keep the tax rate calculation conservative. And if we were to increase this number, the tax rate would look lower. Our estimated tax rate would look lower. And we run the risk of possibly having it be higher. This way, we know that whatever we're projecting here is probably is on the high side, the which I'm projecting $919.17 mm -hmm. based on those two numbers I just showed you. Right. And, and historically, we can say at this point with that projection, we have seen it come in lower consistently. So last year, you know, it was projected at. Well, last year was over twenty dollars, but the valuation thing just changed everything. Right, and but we need to say that that that's that's why we have some some sense that the, it will be lower than nineteen dollars and seventeen cents. Yes, and then um, of course, state aid actually went down, and I think that's a real important narrative. I think that's a real important thing for us to point out. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not getting help at all. The state keeps getting more and more money. They're flush. They're sending monies back to taxpayers and they're doing nothing to address the towns. And that includes the new budgets are just not addressing the issues in the towns. But, can we can we say yeah. something about the sort of unprecedented, like how, how many years have right. we observed increases in however small in, in state support? Do we? Well, last year it was reduced by 0.54. Oh, okay. And well, here, that was estimated. Actually, I don't know if if it came in that way. It was estimated as down. Yeah. So here's the cherry sheet numbers. Um, let's do it this. All way. right. So now I, it, I was thinking that we might be able to make some kind of case about how. Uh, am I in the right place? Oh no, I'm at the wrong place. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. Bear, bear with. Okay. Right, because you got to do um, those. Yeah, are it's the net. Right. So it did go down in FY21. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Not sure why. It's a thought. You know, it's a good thought. Um, yeah, it's these items here was a school choice, which kind of makes things weird. Yeah, it went down again in 22, and then it went up. Yeah, so it does fluctuate. But the point is, you know, it's just, they're not helping. They're not giving us, we're seeing these increases and they're not increasing their aid. So yeah. what can we increase? The only place we can go is property taxes. Right. And Becky um, has put out a sheet that shows the actual increase on tax levy over time. And it rarely was at 2.5. Right, um, hardly so ever. Hardly ever. We need to see that sheet because telling them we're using unused levy capacity isn't something that people can wrap their head around. But yeah, yeah, we we'll get to that. Yeah, right. We're going to get to that in a second. We can talk about that a little more in depth, but uh, that is an important point this year, and I'll I'll demonstrate it in a minute. So, anyways, well, yeah, there's a section that talks about it more specifically, so we can talk about what we can put in that section. 
So, I mean, this is this is pretty much boilerplate the way we do it year to year. Yeah. I didn't see any reason to change it much. I think your point, AJ, was a good one if it, if it was true. But, you know, we do need to talk about the state aid in our narrative for sure. Yeah. And we can certainly point to this, that it's a reduction. Yeah. So, I think especially since, the, you know, there's at least a perception that um, we might actually see an increase due to legislative changes. So, yeah, I think that's that's important. Well, Becky put in the most optimistic state aid because she took the line items from the governor that wow. were higher than the House and Ways. And for those lines, she used that number. And the lines where the House and Ways number was higher, you know, within the cherry sheet, she took the House and Ways. So she's being very optimistic. Yeah. So, and this is how it looks in the pie chart. I checked these numbers. They all tie back up to this. Right. Um, Slightly different um, because the overlay isn't broken out. So the um, residential tax number is different. But if anybody asks, I, we can explain that on the floor. Okay. In the effort to save ink, I made beautiful. the residential tax piece. Yeah, it's beautiful. Light. No, it was a good point. It was a good point because um, that thing was black. Yeah. Now when we print 200 pages of this or more, uh, this section will be white. So uh, it's not really white, it's shaded, but it's so, a lot less ink for sure. Yeah, thank you. And I didn't want to abandon the pie chart because no, the pie chart really shows it. Right. So here's the expense side. Um, same number, of course, in total. And you can see how it spreads across everything. But the negative thing about this is you can't year to year compare all these lines, but that's what the budget schedule is for. So if no questions on this, and then, you know, in the context of the expense budget, we do show, I, I take it back because we do highlight all the big items in item one, but are we, we're, this is a statement we've always put down every year. Um, so, I mean, we don't want to change that, right? No. Do you, do you want to put for um, B, the percent increase for the elementary school? Did you not do it for a reason? I don't do it for any of them other than the total. Oh, I see. Okay. Otherwise, I'd have to do it for all of them. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm happy with that. Yep. So elementary school pops right off the page. The salary increase. I just took the, the budget schedules. Becky sent me an Excel version, as you saw, and I just took all the salary line differences, and they came out to roughly twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, that does not include the addition of two positions. Two yeah. positions, right? Well, That's, maybe you would put that separately anyways. I did. Uh, I did. Fired, uh, they're both oh, I, I and J. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, and then of the legal goes up 25, but I did note that 15 of it is free cash. And, you know, you can see I do this in the order of, of magnitude, right? Yeah. Let's start with the large ones first. And then retirement county, solid waste. Um, Human services, um, and I, I did highlight the mosquito control. I don't know if you wanted to do that, but I thought because that's probably going to be a talking point on town floor. Right. Yeah. And then the regional school, I basically, the regional school was 13000 but there was a $2,000 decrease in their debt. So I just took the net of the two. Uh -huh. um, and then, of course, the new positions. Heating and vehicles, uh -huh. I... Um, this number, this 18 here, the all other was kind of high. Mm -hmm. It would have been, it was like 39,000, which I thought was a lot. So mm -hmm. I tried to find a couple other lines. So I actually combined these two lines because they're really affected yeah. by the same. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. And then I did the same thing with, uh, oh, and then I show a decrease in elementary school I'll educate uh, right. transportation, which is really the one thing we're benefiting from the state. I mean, this is it right here. All that they're doing and all that they're touting that they're doing, and, and they are doing a good job. I know I know they are trying to help a lot of different people. I, you know, overall, I'm, I'm not angry about the budget. I don't think it's horrible, but this is really all we're getting from it, as right. far as is I that, can tell. Is that, the only, is that the only line that where we observe a decrease of at least 10,000? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, I'll go back and check again, but no, there was no other. Yeah. I can't think of one. Yeah. I can't think of one, but uh, I'll check again and make sure I didn't miss any. That would be bad if I did. So there's no harm in looking again. So I added, I took my calculator out and those all add up to 230,000, which is the total budget increase of their 3.5. Great. All right. All right. Um, I just want to write this down over 10K. All right. Um, so this is, this is the, this is a really, un, this is different than most years. It, the format is relatively the same, but total levy increase, 177. Um, that, for your information and for my double checking, ties back to, oh, actually it doesn't tie back here. That's right, it's buried. Yeah, it's not easy. All right, never mind. Um, 177 and basically, oh yeah, it's made up of two lines. Yeah. This, every year we show the, the two and a half increase. And for the first time, usually what this line says here is it says the excess levy capacity increased by, um, because we didn't need the whole 2.5, I forget how we rewarded it, and it'd always be an amount, and it showed the growth. This right. year, right, different story. Right. And, you know, there are individuals in town who have asked about this line at town meetings in the past. Right. So we do need to be prepared to explain that yes, year over year, we've usually been we've been increasing it for the last umpteen years. Right. And this is the first year where we actually need it. And right. the tax levy is actually going to increase by more than 2.5%. Right. Actually, you know, I probably should put a percentage here for that. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Okay. I'll have to figure out what it is. Yeah, and I'm looking at last year's, and so it, on the um, for the excess levy capacity, it said tax levy available, 2.5% is blah, less the levy not needed to fund the budget, which adds 41K to the excess levy capacity. So that was, you know, all the words. I think putting this one, um, there's actually some excess levy capacity still available, right? Yeah, there must be because we. Added oh, there's six hundred and fourteen thousand available. There's right. a ton available. Right, right, and and I guess we don't. There's a there's a that it goes in our favor when we say we don't always push the two point five, um, but maybe we don't need to add that fact right now. We we'll just leave it. Well, we might. I think it's going to be asked about, and I think we're going to end up having to talk about it. That's why I say I think we at least need to be prepared for it. Yeah. We don't have to get in depth. We just tell people, you know, we're, we are using 27,000 levy capacity, and I'm sure a hand is going to go up and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe not, but, and, and I don't know, maybe we do want to talk about it and just address it up front, you know, when we do the budget presentation before we take questions. Mm -hmm. AJ, I mean, that's up to you. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm of, I feel like there's always, you know, there's like a couple people who <laughs> are able to understand the, the sort of accounting concepts that are involved here. And those people are interested in it, but I feel like the majority of people, when, when, whenever we try to spell this out, if they get sort of pretty lost. It's the, I, I blame them. Yeah. I agree. And so, and I I feel like at the last select board meeting, the select board felt compelled to do, you know, historical and current information that it's like it's too much. It they're yeah. trying to take a complicated situation and explain it. And it takes way too much time. And people, you know, their meetings turn out to be too long and, and tiresome. And and I agree. It's there are people who are going to argue, but the process, this distillation of the process is already a lot. So yeah. I need to give them more. It's a tough time to learn it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what's new, and I don't know if you want this or not, but I thought we should flag the point that, you know. Mm -hmm inflationary times and yet the state isn't stepping up at all right. you know and in the art some people are going to argue well the elementary school 
you know, the population hasn't been growing. So why would you expect the aid to grow? Well, because of inflation. Yeah. If you look at how they calculate the $625,000 that they're giving us, they calculate the foundation, they calculate the minimum, and they give us the difference. Well, the foundation is too freaking low. If we funded our school at the foundation level, it's like 1.5 million, you yeah. know. Turn off the heat. Right, yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Not even close to that. So it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready to move on then? Yeah. So this one's tricky um, in only one aspect, and that is free cash at the beginning of last year. I'm going to bring up our schedule and I'll blow it up a little, I guess. You know, our free cash at the beginning of last year was 1062000 but we had these two special meeting items here. Oh, yeah. And so um, it's really starting at our total cash is starting at 1461. Our free cash is starting at actually, I should take this. It's starting at 906. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I wasn't sure the best way to do that. My cat walks in. Although it's not a bad idea to say that our free cash at the start of the year was blah, 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 one million. And then emergencies came up that had to be dealt with. Yeah, like FY23 um, unanticipated. Yeah, I mean, really, this is the only way I address it. Oh, I see. That's the extent that I address it. I don't know if that's good enough. Um, free cash. We could, I mean, we, maybe we could add something down here. It is a little, I, I mean, I feel like when people read A, I think they're, they're assumed, I don't know if anybody's going to do this, but they might have a note from kind of last town meeting or something, and it might seem surprising that, because I, I think when we say as of June 1st, 2023 is 907, that, that, yeah, that, that that seems a little oh. bit misleading. Yeah, so maybe it's it's leaving out an important fact, right? Right. Uh, so so maybe what we could say is free cash as of June third, twenty twenty three. You could have the 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 number pre special town meeting. Then line B could be actually. You know what? Yes. I know where you're going. Uh, yeah. Why don't we do? How, all right, give me yeah, one maybe second. Have, maybe have so, two sub lines. Yeah. Right. Free cash as of July first. Yeah. And just show yeah. the math. Yeah. Exactly. Twenty two. Right. Yes. One. Yeah. One oh six. No one What was it? Two. I have to go back and look. I yeah. think it was this. It was sixteen oh two. Okay, and then. Last uh, special town meeting uh, I'm gonna put appropriation. Yeah. Isn't it 106? Oh uh, yeah, it was 106. Thank you. Yep. It was 62. Yep. Okay. Because yeah, we're going with this, we're we have principles, and one of them is being able to meet unanticipated. Right. And PFAS has a lot of political clout. Oh, yeah. It's another one of those hot button issues. It's affecting all the towns. Look at New, New Salem. Yeah. Huh? You read about that today. Well, the school, but I don't know how they're doing, like, start at your fire department and move outward. <laughs> you know, that I don't know that anybody else has really got that nailed um they're all going to have to do something yeah yeah so i'll say june 3rd the day of the town meeting yeah mm -hmm. and what did i say 906 90 uh let me find it 907 907. Okay, good. That is that is what it was. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
after, line up my key. After your dot for a special town meeting and you put in the amount, I would, well, do you think it should say PFAS and um, Data. software? Well, I'm running out of space, but I suppose I can make a, a just over on onto the right of it after the yeah book. no what I'm what I'm gonna how about this oh, Susie asterisk mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I make a footnote yeah, yeah that's good mm -hmm. so um no that was weird I'm not real good with word um there we go oh, God that's weird it keeps making a yeah if you do just Command Z after it does that, yeah. Just or un. Yeah. What's, what's Command Z? I don't know that. Uh, just like undo. Uh, so if you press space now, yeah. Okay, now just do or hit that little undo. Uh, there you go. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. All right. So um, special town meeting PFAS and soft um, land conservation. What's a good term? Oh. Uh, Wait, was it a VADAR software? Yeah, was it VADAR? Oh, that too, right. Was Are those the only two things that cost money, VADAR software? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, is that okay? Yeah, that's good. And somewhere in our presentation, we have to go, we also need to say the town works to recover some of the money through possible Grants and resources. Yeah. Work. Can work. For, for PFAS, you're saying. Yeah. It's true for PFAS and it's true yeah. for the DOD, which didn't come out of um Total you know, roof. Of yeah. fund. But it's it's sort of an underlying principle that we use, and that's part of how we tell other people where's what money are you gonna bring to this? All right. I just want to underline this. I think what makes this PFAS issue differently is that since we don't have a choice, we have to <laughs> we have to address this situation. We've got to sort of front the the expense, right? And we're going to work to try to get as much of that reimbursed after the fact. Yeah. Well, and and that issue around we don't have a choice, and and other towns aren't spending this yet. It's because they are keeping their head in the sand. That, that's their choice. <laughs> we actually, you know, tipped open the, we opened the door and here we're going. Right. I think I want to do it this way. Yeah. We don't have to tell them spend, we can tell them spend down in the footnote. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, I didn't like the way it was looking. It, it didn't really look. maybe indent this a little mm -hmm. what do you think like that yeah that look okay yeah yeah and then um what i want to do is show that this is a total so i want to show this as a underline oh no 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 i'll get it i should move on Wait, I just want to get this. Well, I'm sorry. If I move on, I may forget. I don't know why it's doing. Can't you just go to underline? Yeah, you can just I'm going to. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, that's right. Because the other one does. All right. Yeah. And Word, it does the whole thing. Okay. Let me save. All right. I'm ready. So um, spend spending appropriated for. I'll use right. good language. Just to give you guys a heads up, I've got a, a yep. meeting at 11. I'm going to hop off, but. Yep. Oh, oh, you bummer. Can, can keep working with me. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you a draft of when we're done, though. Great. Cool. Uh, so, four, I would just leave for now because there's a whole. Yeah. Four and five are all subject to change. We got the spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, six upcoming capital projects. Looks like you wanted to put something else in there, George. I just left it blank to remind us that we need to think about what those are. I, I, AJ, this is actually, as a member of the Capital Planning Committee, you might have some information. And if you want to send it to us at a later date, I can add it later. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to look at notes and stuff to figure that out. But it wasn't painting, right? B, elementary school building, it didn't include painting, did it? Oh. Well, in the past, it may have. Yeah, so I think you can drop that item where at least the kitchen part is. Yeah, is the that, painting and the it. parking lot, those are still. Yeah, well, what that, about, you know, elementary school building, period? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, thinking about expenses for the future. Yeah. It's always a potential, there's always potential capital items in maintaining a building of that size. Well, and along with that is the building committee's inventory process is going to generate more capital projects. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one where I think we need to just kind of, I don't know, do some research and see what, okay. what what's going on. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, AJ, if, if you've got notes, that would be great. You, okay. And yeah, just let us know what you want us to add there. And yeah. How you want to sure. look. As far as the library goes, do we need to have this on here this year? I, I think we, we should, should drop it. it. Yeah. No, dump it. Gone. I mean, it's Excellent. loaded and going. Oops. Yeah. I also kind of think eight. Like I, I know, you know, yeah, it's there's done. an update to share, but it's it's yeah, really yeah. more about the progress of that project, not the right. It's not done. Funding. Yeah, it's, it's already yeah. Done. So have you heard the did you hear about the engineering report? No, I'm surprised it's that much lower. Yeah. So what I talked to I talked to Becky when we were going over the budget the other day. You know, I she sent it to me and I QC'd it for her and gave her a bunch of uh, some information, but I asked her about that and she said the engineering report says a half a million dollars to repair to rebuild the roof yeah. and they're out to bid and on May 7th I think she told us they're going to get bids in that's the deadline and mm -hmm. so there's a chance that it's already fully funded yeah, yeah. how, how yeah. crazy right think about what, what what if we had appropriated at the last town meeting whatever <laughs> people were asking for like 700 yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I know we are prudent yeah. and prepared. Those are things. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I gotta hop off, guys. We'll see you. Okay, AJ. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talk. Thank you for your help. All right. Bye. Bye. See ya. This part, Susie, is the same as last year because there hasn't been a new actual yeah, real report. Yeah. We can leave it off because there's you no we... issue. Interesting. And and I think it's something that people can't even really, first of all, it's OPEB, you know, like, what is that? So I don't think if it's not on the radar of, of headed in a different direction, I think we can leave it off. That's my thought. So that's fine. Um, let's make sure we tell everybody in the committee this because there are two members in their minority report who are going to be addressing OPEB. They, are they going to do a minority report? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. they have for the last three years. What makes us yeah. think they're not going to do it this year? They did talk about it. Um, yeah, and then one meeting, Bob said, well, we don't have to do it. We're not necessarily going to do one. Like, yeah. No, he did say that, but that's just to get us to lower it. Yeah. To, no, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I and mean, one less um, melody, I think they have less people working on anything. Yeah, I had a, I know we're recording, but I had a conversation with Becky um, about that. I wish I had talked to AJ. We need, Paul Lyons is going to approach AJ. Yeah. And he's going to ask him, what do you want in your next FinCon person? I think we need somebody who understands the finances. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody who understands how it works. Somebody who has the capacity to understand it because nobody's going to understand it if they haven't been doing this. It's going to take two, three, four years before all these concepts come together and they see how it all fits together. Yeah. The way you and I do is because we've been around and doing it for so long. Well, we need to get some youth in here and Get them that knowledge because yeah. um, it's a lot to put on Becky and right. to get all that part done when she's got, especially this year, so many distractions. Right, right. So it's a conversation I'd like to have with him and say, hey, you know, yeah. I, I'm not going to be around forever and you know, right. we need to maintain schedules and we need to double check and have people who can explain the concepts, understand them. Right. Yep. So. Thoughts for the future. You know, I, I did recommend um, changing this format. I'm not really sure what's the best way to do that. You're calling it opportunities and 
challenges? Yeah, opportunities and risks are, you know, I think a pretty standard term in business. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> that's what we, that's, I, I mean, that's what we did at work, opportunities yeah. and risk. And usually they wanted a probability next to each one. I don't know if we are in a position to be able to say how likely things right. are to happen. Right. But some things are more likely, like the quabbin, than other things. Yep. All right. So let's call this uh, risk and uh, or. Okay. And then uh, a subsection called risk, right? Mm -hmm. Which, of course, this is not. And then I'll make. You'll sort them out. We'll do this. Or I guess we can use letters like we do. Well, actually, we don't want to use letters. What am I talking about? We'll go with numbers. Okay. Yeah. So, looking at what we had last year, the, the state as a financial partner is a risk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of is. Storage yeah. of public records. I mean, that's a potential yeah. cost. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't necessarily keep them in this order, but I'll throw them up here for now. Mm -hmm. Health insurance costs for elementary, and that's a risk. Yep. And go, yeah. And I'd say that's a bigger risk. Yeah. The paved roads issue. Huge. Is there one called just um, aging infrastructure? Yeah, the continued maintenance for the 40 year old building. You know, it's interesting that the um, the fact that the fire station generator just uh, broke down, I don't think the generators are fully on the capital plan reoccurring costs. And so we've added things to our town that might not have made it to an awareness of how what it takes to maintain the town. Um, $20,000 a pop for a generator, well, there's the school. And the school one had problems starting up after that um, storm where the surge came through. Um, yeah. so there's really um, the capital plan people are going to maybe address rereading it and having a complete, a better understanding of what's on it and how often it has to be dealt with. So it's going to be revised. Yeah. Um, or maybe we just call it revisiting and revising the capital plan because um, I'm not sure it's unanticipated. Well, they we can't, yeah. They need to, they, and, and that's what Bob seemed to be saying by the end of the um, season on capital plan. Yeah. 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 Updating the capital yeah. plan for yeah. Yeah. new cap, um, new for capital expenditures. I mean, they, they have to update it for capital expenditures. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, so that may impact our, um, it, it is this year, the backhoe. The backhoe ended up coming in um, three years earlier than we anticipated. So they need, to, they need to be looking at what are our expectations and how to revise them. Should I, should I take this out so it's broader, the four new yeah. equipment? Yeah. Yeah, you Keep can just take that out. It's just updating the long-range capital plan. It's going to have it. Yeah. Well, we could say um, new items, um, timing of yeah. items, yep. mm -hmm. et cetera. Right. Good. What else is down below to pull up? Um, so. School costs. Yeah. Ongoing loss of grants. Right. I don't know. Is that still an issue? Yeah. I mean, the, the loss of the. Yeah. 
COVID grants. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. So it's act the ongoing loss of grants, and you can take out the word early childhood. It's just it's not only that. It's pretty. I think it goes at where below four or yeah or above four. That's fine. And you can take out the word early childhood education because it's any grants that we lose. Well, I don't know what happened here in terms of my yeah. bear with. Yeah. I think. Yeah, all right. I'll fix that all later. Well, I can fix it now. Yeah, you got it. You almost got it. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know. Sometimes when I'm doing the minutes, this is the part that's most annoying. <laughs> hey, you do a great job. Appreciate it. There we go. Yeah, minutes isn't fun, is it? No. I'm lucky. I only do it for the personnel board. It's pretty simple with them, but it's yeah. it's definitely challenging for our committee. All right, that's good. So you said ongoing grants for just ongoing grant funds that can yeah. go out. The OPEB, the school committee policy for school choice. Well, so um, then they have a policy now. There's that's a true argument about it, but it doesn't mean they don't have a policy. It, I think we should drop it. Sure. Yeah. And not only regional school building maintenance, but we kind of addressed the schools up here. No, we didn't. You have the school roof and track up above. Oh, that's for nothing, something else, right? Yeah, no, I but I'm... C, C is right. Um, it is the regional, we're facing that and there's a lot coming down. There's no question, but I'm wondering if we should also have one for the elementary school. Um, oh, see, it's number four, continued maintenance. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, okay, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the long range capital plan. Um, all right, let's see what else is down here. Continue oh, economic. PFAS should be in that list. Number oh seven. my God, yeah. Number seven. So what's what's the right language for describing PFAS? Um, mitigation? Testing um, and mitigation, yeah. I bet we'll be obliged to test forever. Just like there's still a requirement to test for the fire station's previous problem, not PFAS. Yeah. Yep. Well, Susie, that was huge. Um, and, you know, let's encourage everybody in the committee to think about other things that belong yeah. here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So now. Um, Opportunity. Yep. What are you laughing at? Um, I guess it's an opportunity that um, solar is an opportunity, <laughs> but yeah, but you know, the, one of the ways is an opportunity is to see how it can be an opportunity. Just not saying, um, just maybe solar opportunities. Well, one one of the things we have. We do have something that addresses that um, payment of taxes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I want to say. I'll just throw an increase for now. Oh, maybe maybe it's not even identified as solar. It, it's that other thing that we had. Explore re new revenues. That E. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Continue to consider. Oh no, um, which one is it? Investing in projects that reduce costs. Yeah. 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 Because if you say it the other way, people are going to think that you're um, right. campusing for, I forget what they're called, the name right. of that company was, right. Right. for that project. Right. All right. Okay, that's good. And then, um, yeah. Explore new revenue sources. Do we get any? Do we have any? Oh, I that's know that. That's Jim Walton's sentence. He's quite um, 
you know, it's kind of pie in the sky that we could find some new revenue sources, but um, he he feels like we need to continue to reflect that we are 90, uh, you know, 82% residential, so. Well, actually, you know something? I'm wondering if this should be in the risks. Uh -huh. It uh -huh. just shows how much when there's yeah. changes in our town, it the weight is carried right. by, the load is carried by all of us. That's right, that's right. And to what extent it is, this is that's what this addresses. I, I, that's true. I mean, the big, the big, the big debate about school aid has been, and everybody agrees, it's not fair to put the weight of local education on the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we see the results of when what happens when, when they do that. And, and the mm -hmm. poor communities have really suffered as a result. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, we're a little shy in opportunities here. Yeah, not really. Yep. And also, you know, this was a section where we could put a little narrative in, like this last thing, capital recognition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, all, I mean, all of it, we need people to go to the website. We do not need committee members to answer questions when the information is available on the website. We don't have the juice to do that. We don't have the time and energy to do that. So I would say, you know, it, all, um, a lot of information is available on the website. Yes. Um, pay, uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Oh, gosh. What did I just do? Payment in lieu of taxes, by the way, is another opportunity because uh, for the DO, D, um, DCR land, because that was the conversation you and I had last week. And so it, something it isn't one. It isn't part of one. No, because one is strictly Quabbin Reservoir land. Oh, okay. But the state is oh, also okay. looking at revaluing DCR right. land. Right. Right. I would put D DCR land in there. I, I'm going to. I'm wondering if I should put the beginning like I did for Quabbin or at the end. Yeah, I'd say in the beginning because it's good. Good. All right, so that's not bad. No, I think it's in a good ballpark. So we know that we're gonna be, um, so down at the bottom, the very last thing, capital plan, right where there's a B in there. I don't know what the B is for. Continue to consider economic factors. I, you oh, know, to me, that's not really. Well, why don't you put the capital plan recommendations below B? That's well, I'm, I'm, I don't see these as a risk or an opportunity. Do we wanna say okay. other thoughts or? You know, how do we want to conclude this report? Do we want to put a narrative here? The, the, this is page four. Um, we've narrowed the, I'm not sure why it's not, why it's, oh, we we, we dropped two bullet yeah, bullet school, items. yeah, the school and the OPEB got taken out. So we've created a lot of space for a narrative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think let's let the rest of the committee see it and, um, all right, I'll just leave these dangling. Yeah. And we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How they want to incorporate this, if they want to incorporate it. I'm sure we're going to get lots of ideas and lots of thoughts. Right, right. So at this point, updating the dollars as we change the budget, if we change the budget, it shouldn't be a problem for me. I should be able to fix all of these things pretty right. quickly. I got the spreadsheets, the backup for all of it. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't going to, you know, I'll change this. This would be easy enough to change if those change. Um, talk to the committee about how they really want to address this, of course. Our capital decisions will affect right. four and five. Mm -hmm. So, you know, none of this stuff will be hard for me to do. Let's see what AJ sends us for these for yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Good. I think we're done. And what about putting the watermark draft on this? Because we know uh, somehow, or, you know, in the, so everybody in our committee should get this so that they can start kvetching. And um, we need to, to make sure they realize some sections are not finalized, but none of it's finalized. So, you know, it's a total draft. Oh, boy. Undo. Oh, boy. I don't know what I just did.
Can you undo it, Control Z? I've been trying to undo and it's not, oh, close view. All right, there we are. Okay, um, how do you do that? It's under uh, design. There's the watermarks. All the way over to the right, watermark, and there's draft. It will be one of the choices. You have to scroll a little bit or something. I can, I can never figure yeah, out. Yeah, you're right. No, there I have to scroll. There it is. Thank you. I think that's really important. Yeah. Always important. And I actually did have it at the top, but this is lame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's lame. Okay, that's yours is much better. All right, that sounds good. All right, good. And so send it out to them and um, send it out to the whole committee. Yep. Yep. And this is going to be basically on the May 2nd. Uh, is it May 2nd? Yes. And this, uh, with the select board, if I remember correctly. Um, geez, I don't think I wrote that in my draft. Where are those? Um, okay. Let me look. I didn't say when we're next meeting. Oh, well, that's bad. Hold on. Let me, I can tell you this. Um, I think it's either May, we said we invite the select board to meet on May 2nd or May 9th. <laughs> there, well, there it is. No, but here you go. This is Becky posted the meeting. Okay. So we're definitely going. It's, it's, it's um, next Tuesday. I'm, I'm flying, I'm flying Wednesday morning and I'm going to be in New Orleans until the following Monday. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this stuff is going to change. I might be able to do it on the plane. I might be able to do it in the mornings some of those days, but we're going to be pretty active one more. Yeah, meeting. you should just check out for a bit. I mean, I, this is the reality the town needs to deal with and understand is that we have volunteers doing this work and it's a lot of work. So you've got to. Yeah, but, but this is just too important. And, and it, it's not that hard. And honestly, yeah. These are skills I used to use every day yep. in my sleep and I don't. So it's kind of nice to be able to just kind of keep it a little sharp. Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal for me, um, but I can't. Yeah, I, I am going to be somewhat distracted in terms of my. Yep. Uh, OK. Schedule. All right. Great. Well, thank you, George. Yeah, thank you, Susie. Nice and I'll read it again in whole and then I'll think about what I need to what pops out at me. Yeah. And bring it to the meeting on Tuesday. Yep, I will. OK. All right, take See care. You there. Yep. Bye. Bye.